What up? This is Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In the last videos, we talked about the anatomy of the respiratory system, the mechanics of breathing, lung volumes and lung capacities, spirometry, and the pulmonary function tests. Today, it's time to talk about how your lungs help you regulate the pH of the blood. What's the normal pH of your blood? 7.4. Your blood is slightly basic. Please watch these videos in order, especially the last three. The functions of the respiratory system were discussed before. Remember, your lungs should regulate the acid-base balance. What are the gases that your lungs deal with? Carbon dioxide and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is an acid. Why? Because if I get carbon dioxide right here, add it to water, which is all over your body, including water vapor, it will give you H2CO3. What do you call this? Carbonic acid. Say it again. Carbonic acid. So carbon dioxide is an acid. Therefore, if I have too much carbon dioxide in my body, I can get acidosis. If I have too little carbon dioxide, I can get alkalosis. If you're breathing fast like this, <laughs> you're washing out your carbon dioxide, decreasing the carbon dioxide in your lungs, and since carbon dioxide is an acid, when you decrease the acid, you get alkalosis. Therefore, hyperventilation causes respiratory alkalosis. Conversely, if you're breathing slowly like this, you're retaining carbon dioxide, causing respiratory acidosis. Therefore, Hypoventilation causes respiratory acidosis. So, when your respiratory rate is high, you get respiratory alkalosis. But when your respiratory rate is low, you get respiratory acidosis. Of course, respiratory rate is the number of breaths per minute. Do you remember your chemistry? Yeah. What's an acid? Well, we have three definitions for an acid. An acid is a substance that yields protons when dissolved in water. A proton donor is an acid. An electron pair acceptor is an acid. The first definition is known as the Arrhenius acid. The second is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. The third is the Gilbert Louis acid. X plus water yields proton. Therefore, X is an acid. Protons plus NH3 gives you this H, NH3, what we call NH4. What happened here? What happened here is this donated a proton to this. Therefore, this is an acid, a Bronsted Lowry acid, that is. Third, an electron pair acceptor. See this? Became this. Now, who accepted the electrons? The H. That's why this is an acid. What is hydrogen ion concentration? Well, it's the concentration of hydrogen ion in a fluid. And as you know, amount equals volume times concentration. Therefore, concentration equals amount over volume. Therefore, when I say the concentration of hydrogen ion here is X, it means it's the amount of hydrogen ions divided by the volume of the solution. This gives you the hydrogen ion concentration. Of course, you know that the higher the number of hydrogen ions in the test tube, the greater the concentration of hydrogen ion and the more acidic the solution, but the lower the pH. Why is this, Medicosis? Because pH equals negative log hydrogen ion concentration. In other words, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration, the lower the pH. Pause and review. What's a base? The opposite. A substance that yields OH when dissolved in water. A proton acceptor, an electron pair donor. Pause and digest. Let's talk about the hydroxyl ion concentration in the tube. Of course, the higher the number of hydroxyl ions, the greater the concentration and the more alkaline the solution, but the lower the pOH. So when OH concentration is high, pOH concentration is low. When pOH concentration is low, pH is high because this 
is an alkaline solution. And if you remember your chemistry, pH plus pOH equals 14. Whenever you have two entities added to each other, the relation between them is inverse. Therefore, when pOH goes down, pH goes up. Remember this, acid plus base equals salt plus water. Here's an acid, here's a base, here's a salt, here is water. Why is HCl an acid? Because it yields H. Why is NaOH an acid? Because it yields OH. Get that H from here, the OH from here, you get water. Here. Here is a fact that you should never forget. Your metabolism secretes acids, not bases acids you should be able to wake up from a coma without forgetting this basic fact no pun intended the fact is basic but your metabolism secretes acids i hate myself your metabolism secretes acid remember whether you're eating carbohydrates fats or proteins the end result is acetyl coa enters into the krebs cycle and then electron transport chain to give you atp right right what else was secreted from here? Oh, I released carbon dioxide, which will happen to meet water. Carbon dioxide plus water equals H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. Your metabolism secretes acids. Moreover, metabolism in the absence of oxygen gives you what? Lactic acid. This is anaerobic glycolysis. And of course, lactic acid is an acid. Your metabolism secretes acids. And that's why your blood pH is slightly alkaline to counteract this acidosis. Beautiful. Here is the TCA cycle secreting all kinds of acids. Metabolism secretes CO2. Here is the electron transport chain. You will end up with water. Carbon dioxide from the last slide plus water from this slide gives you carbonic acid. Your metabolism secretes acids, including carbon dioxide, including uric acid, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, all kinds of acids. Speaking of acids, there are two types of acids in your body, volatile acids and non-volatile acids. The volatile acids are carbon dioxide. The non-volatile ones are phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, lactic acid, uric acid, etc. Whose job is to get rid of this? The lungs. Whose job is to get rid of this? The kidneys. What if the lungs failed to excrete carbon dioxide? You will end up with acidosis caused by the respiratory system. We call this respiratory acidosis. What if the kidney failed to secrete this? You will end up with acidosis caused by a kidney problem. We call this metabolic acidosis. This is what I call the golden equation. Very important. Carbon dioxide plus water will give you carbonic acid using an enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase. N, no, hydro water. Because this enzyme removes water and gives you something with no water in it. I like something that's not wet. That's what I mean. Carbonic acid will dissociate into the HCO3 and H. This is an acid. This is a base. Whose job is to regulate the side of the equation? The lung's job, because this is a volatile acid. But whose job is to regulate this? The kidney's job for the fixed acids. Here is a very important equation. Carbon dioxide partial pressure in your blood is proportional to the metabolic production or the metabolic rate or the rate of metabolism over the rate of ventilation or the respiratory rate. Let's say that you are metabolizing too much. Well, your metabolism secretes acids carbon dioxide will go up. Let's say that you are hypoventilation, you're breathing less quickly. What's gonna happen to carbon dioxide? It's also gonna go up. And we call this respiratory acidosis. But what if I'm eating too much meat and drinking too much alcohol? Too much metabolism will increase my CO2. This is called metabolic acidosis. Let's say that my respiratory rate went up. What's going to happen to carbon dioxide? It's going to go down. And we call this respiratory alkalosis. Your kidneys regulate the numerator. Your lungs regulate the denominator. That's why this equation is beautimous. Do you remember Louis Chatelier's principle? Yeah, it has to be a 
reversible reaction like this. Let's say that carbon dioxide went up. So when the reactants go up, this will shift the entire reaction to the right. Conversely, if this part of the equation increased, we call these the products, we will shift the entire equation to the left until we achieve equilibrium. This is Lou Chatelier's principle. Now let's play some games. Assuming that this cannot change, okay? If H went up like this, what do you think is gonna happen to HCO3? Well, it has to go down to balance the equation. Oh, so that the net effect on the products is nothing. And that's why if I have metabolic acidosis, you will find that my bicarbonate level has decreased. Bingo, Louis Chatelier's baby. Conversely, assuming that this side of the equation cannot change, if HCO3 went up, H is gonna go down. And that's why when I have metabolic alkalosis, H is gonna decrease because it's an alkalosis, HCO3 is gonna increase. Louis Chatelier's baby. Now what if carbon dioxide increased? Maybe because you're not breathing as much as you should. The reactants went up. This will shift the entire equation to the right, which will increase the H and increase the HCO3. And that's why if I have respiratory acidosis, you will find that my hydrogen ion concentration went up and my bicarbonate went up. And of course, you know when the hydrogen ion concentration goes up, that the pH goes down. Conversely, suppose that I have a very rapid respiratory rate. <laughs> I'm washing out my carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide decreased. The reactants decrease, forcing the entire equation to shift to the left, trying to increase the reactants. And this will happen when you decrease the H and decrease the HCO3. That's why when I have respiratory alkalosis, you'll find that H went down, HCO3 also went down. As you know, when the H goes down, what's going to happen to pH? pH goes up. Forget Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Louis Chatelier is the real French MVP. Just joking. Don't forget carbon dioxide is a freaking acid because it gives you carbonic acid. And that's why we have said before, the main function of the lungs is not to get the oxygen in. The main function is to get carbon dioxide out, lest you should die from acidosis. That was deep. The main job of the lung is to get carbon dioxide out because life is only possible within a narrow range of change in pH. We have talked about this before. The numerator is the kidney's job. The denominator is the lung's job. Alveolar ventilation and CO2 elimination, this is a direct relationship. Translation, let's say I'm hyperventilating. <gasps> I'm washing out my carbon dioxide. I'm increasing its elimination. Thank you. And vice versa. If my respiratory rate is low, carbon dioxide elimination is going to be low and CO2 is going to pile up in my system. When my alveolar ventilation is high, <laughs> carbon dioxide is low because it has been washed out. Got it. From this and this, you can lump them together into this. It's not a very accurate equation, but it works. Who should handle the bicarbonate? Kidney. Who should handle the carbon dioxide? Lungs. If bicarbonate went up with no change in carbon dioxide, what's gonna happen to pH? It's gonna go up. We call this metabolic alkalosis. If bicarbonate went down, assuming no change in carbon dioxide, pH is gonna go down, and we call this metabolic acidosis. Assuming that bicarbonate stays the same, if carbon dioxide goes up, pH is gonna go down, this is respiratory acidosis. If carbon dioxide went down, pH is gonna go up, and this is called respiratory alkalosis. Who do you think is more acidic, the artery or the vein? Well, since the cell during metabolism takes oxygen from the artery and gives carbon dioxide and dumps it on veins, carbon dioxide is an acid, therefore veins are more acidic, therefore they have a lower pH. Coming up next, the effect of high altitude on your body. 
If you want to take it to the next level, check out my Asset Base Imbalance course on my website metacosisperfectsnetics.com. 30 videos we're talking with notes, of course. 8 gigabytes of content. You can download it today. You can crush this year and get a 60% discount towards any product on my website. Just use discount code New Year Learning at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Peace.